Hello folks and welcome. So MX23, XFCE Desktop. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, simple backups. You can also use this information to just copy files over to a USB stick or a USB hard drive. So in either case, however you want to look at it. Uh, maybe you're transporting those files over to a Microsoft system or a Mac. I'll talk about some compatibility stuff also. Um, but in either case, folks, um, this is for anyone, and more importantly, toward the end of the video, I'll also talk a little bit about using script files for you more adventuresome and maybe a little bit uh, uh, more advanced users or anyone who wants to learn that kind of stuff. All right, so I am filming in 1920 by 1080. You can adjust your YouTube player gear symbol accordingly. A lot of your YouTube players default to 460. It's a lot less screen res that I'm filming in. So I will um, talk about backups. So let's open up the MX menu and talk about backups. Maybe you have some of this stuff installed. Maybe you have Lucky Backup. Maybe you're using it. Maybe a Lucky Backup for Super User. Or maybe you're using Time Shift. Under default conditions, uh, all three of these are using RSync. RSync is remote sync. RSync is found underneath the hood of most Linux distributions. And uh, RSync is used for purposes of copying files for backups remotely or on your local computer. So I'm going to show you a tool that actually will use RSync. Now Lucky Backup you can certainly use, but I'm also going to talk about maybe you're just doing this quickly and want to transport files, maybe from another MX computer Maybe you're wanting to put that on a Microsoft computer or Mac. You're sharing documents or pictures, for instance. Now, Time Shift, again, it uses uh, RSync as default, but it's meant to well make backups of your system files, not so much your personal, although it can be configured that way. But I'm going to talk about a simpler tool. So another option for you folks a lot of people will also think about the MX tools of snapshots which makes ISOs I'll open this up for you but maybe you're not wanting to make an ISO maybe we're talking about just simple backups all right so I'm going to talk about making some backups to a USB device I just happen to have a hard drive, but you can think about this in this way. This could be a USB stick or thumb drive. All right. Now, mine is formatted with FAT32. Now, why did I format it with FAT32? Because I, I needed to share that with a Mac or possibly Microsoft. And uh, that way I can put the documents that I want on there, possibly some photos. So that you can think about it in that purpose. So I will walk you through the whole process of how to use uh, what a, I'm going to install a tool called GRSync. I'll walk you through the installation process, show you how to use it, and also show you how to remove files on the destination device using the same tool. And then at the end, I'll talk about script files. All right, so I'm going to head on over to MX Package Installer and log in here. Anyone can follow along. And by the way, I do highly encourage that you subscribe if you don't have enough time to watch this in one sitting. That way you can watch it at your leisure and also look at some of my other 200 plus videos. Now, I would uh, just click enable to repose, um, but you can start searching, but it's just faster if you do it this way. Just put in GRS and look for GRSync. GRSync is graphical rsync. It's a very simple tool to use, and it's very simple to install, and it's fairly fast to install. Now, a lot of people will ask, um, is GRSync any faster, slower than using Lucky Backup with RSync, or even TimeShift with RSync, or any other backup tool that uses RSync? No, RSync is RSync. Uh, it all depends on the speed of your computer and what you're connecting to, and as in my case, a USB hard drive. This could be a USB stick. Is it USB 2? Is it USB 3? Is it an internal hard drive? Is it an NVMe? Is it a solid state drive? Which is also, uh, NVMe's are solid state, but this slightly different technology. It could also be a spinning hard drive. 
All that stuff depends on the speed of how you copy these files. So I'm going to type in gr and open that tool up for you for the first time. I just installed this, right? All right. So we have a source and a destination. You're going to be doing one thing at a time. Toward the end of this video, I'll show you script file, which does more than one thing at a time. If you're interested in any of that stuff, it doesn't use GR sync. It uses uh, the tool that's already built into your system, which is our sync. Anyways, let me first use this. So um, really the only thing you uh, need to worry about is the basic options, possibly advanced or extras. I'll talk about some of the options today. I'm going to first do standard backups and then I'm going to show you how to remove files from the actual destination device that syncs it up with your source. And I'll make reference to thinking about that also. All right. So we're going to do source first. What are we copying? So before I click anything, let me first explain something to a lot of folks that always want to copy their home folders instead of using individual files or individual directories or folders. You really don't want to copy your whole home folder because you've got a lot of hidden stuff in there. I'm using control H. That's a common command in all modern Linux file managers. It shows hidden stuff, anything with a dot in front of it. So these uh, hidden directories or folders uh, have a dot in front of it. And a lot of these things are enormous. Just wanted you to be aware of that, especially if you're using web browsers for a long time, they put a lot of cache files in here and etc. So in general, control H, in general, you just want to be copying your docs, maybe your music and pictures, right? All right, with that said, let's open up documents. We're going to take the whole folder, puts the whole path in there and where are we sending it to? Well, to that nice uh, USB back one that we just formatted with FAT32. And we're going to click on that and hit open. So there's the path. And really, I'm just going to keep the defaults on the first one and sync it up. So however long this takes, again, it's, this is no slower than using script files or even lucky backup. They're all the same, GR sync. All right, it's finished. What, hap what happens when I do this again? Nothing. It just verifies that nothing's changed. That's all it does. So this is an exact duplicate of what I have in my originals. That's why you didn't see a change because these are identical. So let me take some files and alter them. So we will, um, how about B? B has uh, some text in it. So I'm gonna replace this text with something different. We'll uh, put in uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever. I'll make this a little bit larger for you if you, if you like to see that. But I'm going to hit save. When I hit save, it changes the attribute on the file. So rsync looks at the attributes of your directories or folders and also files and verifies them against the destination device if you already have a backup. So in this case, I've already backed this stuff up, right? So B has the test, test, test. But my original was altered now with A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You got that so far? All right. So I'm just going to leave it here and I'm going to rerun this thing. And you probably noticed nothing changed other than that this thing just lit up the first file. This actually did alter. And I'll open that for you to let you see it. Now, the reason this was so fast the second time is because it didn't have to replicate all this. It doesn't matter if it's a folder or a file. Our sync knows that nothing changed. So hence, it didn't need to do any of that. That's what makes our sync faster the second time around. And that's why a lot of backup utilities use this. The rsync, that is. This is graphical rsync. All right, now I'm going to show you another option which you need to think about. There's a lot of reason that this is off by default. There's a lot of reasons for that because whenever you're backing up files, a lot of times what happens is you're working with your existing documents and you inadvertently trash something and you don't know it, notice that, and then you end up dumping your trash a little bit later and then you went, oh, it's gone. Well, if you did your proper backup, it's still here, even after you sync this up. Let me show you the difference on, on some of this stuff. So you already saw that it, it made a backup of the file that was altered, right? We have this as a match set. Now watch what happens when I delete, uh, I'll just say C, 
I'll throw it in my trash. It's gone. C is still on my backup drive. Using the defaults, I'm going to resync this. It's going to leave C alone because I told it to. I didn't tell it to delete it, but it adds files and all the files that were altered also. So if I had an additional file, I'll uh, put in another document. I'll call it Z. ZZ, how's that? And go back in here and replicate. Now you can see ZZ just got replicated, but it didn't dump any of the other files. C is gone, by the way, but it's still here. So this is what I want you to think about. Do you really want to delete your files off your backups or whatever your purpose you're using this for? If you do, then flip this option on, and then I would also advise you to turn this one on. There's all kinds of options for GR Sync out there. You can look that up on the internet. All right, so I'm gonna go back to this, back to that, and I'm gonna remove it by hitting play because I have this set for delete on destination because it's gonna find that it, that file was missing. And now it dumped it off my backup device also. So now these are in sync, literally. They should be a match set. Okay, you can see I have a compressed file in here. I got PDFs, text files, and script folder. All right, so again, think about this before you use that option, but you can certainly do that if you wanna keep this and this in sync. Does it have to be a USB hard drive or a stick? No, it could be an internal drive also. So that's GR Sync in a nutshell. What are the rest of these options? Well, if you wanted to save like your source and destination, you can do the plus thing. And you can certainly also alter this. Now, let's say I wanted to also save my photos, pictures to the same source, USB back one, then I would just run the play button and it starts making copies of those. And those will be exact duplicate, including my screenshot of my pictures. So far, so good. Okay. One source, one destination. What if you wanted to multi multiple files? Well, then we're probably talking script files here. So let me show you that if you're interested. I'm gonna create two windows, Control N is in Nancy. And uh, I will move this downstairs because I'm gonna send a file here on my desktop so I can see it. Okay, these are called script files and they're created with a text editor. I'll show you the very simple one first. Again, you create these with a standard text editor, not a word processor. And this may not be everybody's cup of tea, and I get it. But this is using um, a bash or bin bash. So you need that statement first. It's pound explanation point forward slash bin forward slash bash. That's just with the location of where bash is located. Bash stands for born again shell. Not a big deal. But you need that in there. And then one or more rsync lines. I'll show you another one that has three. But this is using rsync-a, that, that's the archive bit, or archive option. This symbol here represents my home folder mx23new, the name of my user, and then documents. So essentially, this part here that you're looking at highlighted represents this part right here with the forward slash, sometimes with an option off or on. Then I put in at least one space in here. Some folks put in two, but I normally just put in one. This is now my destination. Where's it going? What are you copying to? You're copying a source to a destination. Well, my destination is media MX23 new USB back one, because that's the name of my user. Well, that's what that says also. So what is this forward slash back in there? Well, first of all, you see a forward slash there. That just creates a folder called back, lowercase letter, to put those documents into. So let me run this script for you. I'm gonna right click on it and send it to the desktop and run it. And this is an exact duplicate of those. Okay, so far so good, I'm gonna erase that. Whenever you create these things, um, you also need to make sure, right click, properties, that you have this as allowed to be run as a program. This option normally is off, okay? This script here is a little bit more complex. You can probably see that. 
It starts with the bin bash statement and it's got three R sync lines. So I have the documents, the music, and the downloads that I'm going to be copying to. However, this is now going to be called doc and the other two are going to be called the same music to music, downloads to downloads. But I have another option on the tail end here called double dash delete and I'll show you what that does in a second. So first of all, I'm going to create a link to my desktop for that script file and then I'm going to run it and it's going to create three folders however long it takes it's going to create three folders okay so I'm still waiting for it to create the last one now I have the luxury on my my USB hard drive it has a blue light on it and I can tell when it's finished and it just got done and it's got all kinds of goodies in there and all of this stuff like I said has music that one just has one album but this one has many and the same thing goes with my documentation and my downloads folder I'm just going back and forth. So let's go back in here and add something. Let's create uh, a hello world or something. Doesn't matter what it is. I just created a folder. Now, this folder only has three items. I can leave it open for you or I can just leave it like this. It doesn't really matter. But I'll open it so you can see it. And then I'm going to rerun this script right here and it added that immediately because it didn't have to replicate the rest of this stuff. Keep in mind that this script file is running three things. It goes in, in order. It checks documents, then music, then downloads. But since I had stopped at music, it found that there was something missing, so it replicated it. Now, since I have the, one more time, this on the tail end, let me make this larger for you. Since I have the dash dash delete on the end, it's also, also going to verify that these are a match set. So going into music, I'm going to dump the hello world, go back onto the USB device, and then rerun the script, and it's going to remove it. What is this uh, number four copy? All I did was right click and copy that. That way I can also alter this and add more lines to it, possibly. Or I could do it from the original script. So let me show you an interesting little tip that you can do if you decide to use scripts. Um, I will highlight this line right here with my mouse. And then I'm going to right click on it and copy it. Then I'm going to click the next line down and hit paste. So I'm going to add the folder called pictures. It needs to be spelled exactly the same way. It needs to have the uppercase letters or lowercase as a match set. So pictures. Now since I copied that line, that folder has the name of downloads. So if you were to save and rerun this, it will not do this properly because there's two folders with the same name on it. I'm going to change that up and say pics. And then I'm going to hit delete and make sure there's only one space in there. All right. So now I added the new folder and I am going to hit save. And let's test this out. Let's go back in here and rerun this because that's just a pointer to that. So now there's pics. So basically it went and verified that this script made a copy of documents, music, downloads, and pictures. And you can continue this on. You can also put in different devices using script files. Maybe more complex for a lot of new users, but for your medium to advanced users, this is a way to go when it comes down to making multiples. You can certainly use GRSync. It's very easy to use, but it's normally one thing at a time. But again, if you are wanting to delete these files, okay, again, I'm using the delete command on those. That means it's going to remove things. So in my case, I will get rid of the screenshot in my original pictures folder. And go over to here and let you see that it's still here. I'm going to rerun the script. Now the screenshot is gone because it's matching this folder it's up. That's what it's doing. Okay. Don't have to use scripts. You can use GRSync.
You can uh, make copies and alter these. You can add files to them. The good thing about having scripts sitting here is you don't need to use them all the time. I can get rid of the, the links and only use them when I need them. Or you can also use GRSync if you're just copying files over to the USB stick and you're wanting to do this in a hurry. You can also use cut and paste methods. There's all kinds of ways you can actually put files on USB drives or sticks. You can certainly make two boxes and transfer stuff back and forth manually. But if you're using GR sync or R sync with script lines, they will be faster because you already have the files on your system, on your drive, on your USB stick. You don't have to replicate them all over again. And if you've got a folder that's enormous sometimes, it takes a long time to do this, right? Well, GR sync is going to go and verify that nothing's changed and only replicate the difference or delete the difference. Thank you for watching.